Hey there guys, Paul here from TheEngineeringMindset.com. In this video, we are going to be looking at the condenser of a chiller. Just to note, if you have not already watched the previous videos in this series on chillers, then I highly recommend you go back and watch these to build up your base knowledge so you fully understand how this machine works and what the principles are before moving on to these more advanced videos. All right, so condensers, where are they? What do they do and how do they work? So the condenser is located just here and that's just after the compressor and the discharge line and just before the expansion valve, which is located here and the liquid line. And a real world example is gonna look something just like this. So you can see the condenser, uh, typically it's not insulated whereas the evaporator is usually covered in that, that thick insulation. And that's just because the chilled water is contained within the evaporator and that's cost a lot of money to produce, whereas the heat within the condenser is just gonna be rejected out to atmosphere. So if it loses some here in the plant room, it doesn't really matter. The heat that's in there is just a problem which you're trying to get rid of. So it's usually not insulated. However, if the plant room is being cooled by uh, refrigeration as well, then it makes perfect sense to insulate this and reject all the heat out into the building. But if the plant room is just being cooled by outside ambient air, fresh air, then the, it doesn't really matter. So what does the condenser do? Well, the condenser is taking all the heat that's being rejected out of the evaporator. So all that heat that's come from the building that needs to be rejected, all the unwanted heat, and that's sent to the, the evaporator. That heat is then transported by the refrigerant through the compressor and over into the condenser. The condenser then picks up that heat and then moves that through the pump up into the cooling tower. The cooling tower then rejects that heat, so it cools it down, and so the heat just comes out of there and off into the atmosphere. And that returns then at a much cooler temperature, ready to pick up more heat. So you can see there, it's flowing out at about 32 degrees Celsius or 90 degrees Fahrenheit and it's returning at 27 degrees Celsius which is about 81 degrees Fahrenheit. So looking at the condenser we've got the outer shell here and under that shell or inside the shell we've got these tubes which run along from one end to another. Now these tubes contain the condenser water. One is a flow inlet it flows round and then one is a flow outlet um, and on the outside of this is the refrigerant which is coming from the condenser uh, from the compressor so the refrigerant never enters the tubes the condenser water and the refrigerant never meet or mix they're always separated by the tube wall they're completely isolated from each other so that condenser water is coming from the cooling tower into the condenser in through, the, through the water box at the end here, this section is removable and the water then flows through the tubes remember it does not leave, it flows through the tubes to the very end hits this water box on the end which is also removable the water then does a 180 degree turn, comes back through the tubes and then heads over to come and release out of the water box off to the cooling tower again taking any heat it's picked up on the way with it Notice there's a baffle in between the two flows here just to separate that and that just diverts the flow through one side. Obviously there isn't a baffle here and there's nowhere for the water to go so it has to do a 180 degree turn and come back through the tubes out through the exit towards the cooling tower. Then the condenser, uh, the compressed refrigerant is going to come out of the compressor down and start to fill this void within the condenser. You can see these particles representing uh, the refrigerant and notice as the ref uh, the condenser water passes in and passes along through the tubes and these particles of refrigerant start to hit against that they start to condense and transfer their thermal energy into the water so it just transfers through the pipe wall and the heat is then picked up in this condenser water so that changes color to indicate that it's picking up heat it uh, hits the water box does a 180 degree turn it's still picking up the last heat the maximum it possibly can and notice the condense the condensation of the refrigerant these drops here so it's collecting as a liquid in the bottom where it will be it will leave through this exit 
and head out in towards the expansion valve. Meanwhile, the hot or heated con um, condenser water will now head off to the cooling tower. When the refrigerant exits the compressor and heads down towards the condenser through the, the discharge line, it needs to be at a much higher temperature than the return water that's coming back from the cooling tower. So this, this pipe here that's coming back from the cooling tower, the condenser water which is returning at 27 degrees Celsius, which is about 81 degrees Fahrenheit, so the refrigerant that's coming out of the compressor and into the condenser, that refrigerant needs to be a higher temperature than this here. If the refrigerant is the same temperature as this return condenser water, then your refrigerant, then your comp uh, chiller, sorry, will not be able to reject any heat that's been picked up in the building, and you will not be able to cool the building down. Equally, if your cooling tower is unable to reject the heat that's being sent up to it, then it's going to return at the same temperature. So if it's going up at 32 degrees Celsius and your cooling tower is unable to, to reject this heat, either because of um, maybe you've got some recirculation happening or the water is just dumping, there's a problem with the drift uh, the, the baffles or anything, and the water is just returning straight back down into the um, condenser, then you will not be able to reject any heat from the compressor. So it's important that you uh, monitor the temperature of your cooling towers and the flow and return and have some good maintenance regimes on the cooling tower and this system. So here's a thermal imaging uh, or thermal image even of uh, the uh, discharge line coming out of the compressor, the compressor at the top here with a suction line there and so the refrigerant is entering going around the compressor and being sent out down here through the discharge line into the condenser. Now you can see from here that it's going to be around around you know 50 55 degrees Celsius um, and that's the temperature of the refrigerant coming out of the compressor and into the condenser. And there's one more thermal image here showing the inlet and outlet um, of the condenser of the chiller and here you can see that the water is coming back from the cooling tower this one is flowing in through the bottom and it's coming in at 17.6 degrees Celsius and it's exiting at 25.9 degrees Celsius to head up to the cooling tower so this is a slightly different temperature range than um, in the schematic which we're looking at um, and that's just because the schematic is showing a design figures whereas this is an actual figures so there will always be a difference between design and actual. And that depends on the load of the chiller, the outside ambient um, temperature and, and air conditions, and also the load of the building, the amount of unwanted heat which you need to reject. Now with the this type of uh, cooling tower where the condenser water enters in and then is sprayed um, through the cooling tower, to get rid of that heat to reject it and dissipate it into the atmosphere this is an open system so the water uh, whereas this loop here is a closed system this loop here is an open system so the water is sprayed and air and dirt etc can get into this system and what comes into this system gets sent down into the condenser now this presents a problem because you get an effect known as fouling occurring on the inside of the condenser. And that will occur anywhere where the condenser water um, touches the surface of, of any surface inside the condenser. And that fouling is, is really bad for condensers. You, you want as minimum, minimal fouling as possible. And as you can see here where we've taken the uh, water box off of one of the condensers you can see this rough horrible finish um, that's occurred across the, uh, the the tube plate here and that is fouling that's uh, directly from the condenser water where uh, molecules and particles have, have joined onto the surface of this and um, has formed literally a, a, a layer of insulation across um, the inside of this condenser so all these tubes will also have a very thin film of this built up as well now this build-up um, is basically small deposits of salt, 
scale, dirt, mineral buildup, and, and also bacterial growth in there. And uh, as I said, it, it insulates the, the pipe and um, reduces its uh, efficiency and its operate, operation and you know reduces the amount of heat which can be absorbed into the condenser water to be sent off to the cooling tower. This can be treated with uh, you know a rigorous chemical dosing regime, uh, which is fairly typical for uh, condenser water systems. But unfortunately, this by itself will not be enough to stop it. It will just be enough to reduce it or or mitigate it. Alternatively, you can get some specialists to come in, and they'll have some special uh, cleaning equipment, and basically uh, kind of a jet brush with. Um, a jet washer with a brush on the end and this will be pushed um, through the condenser to remove uh, and kind of scrub the inside of that to get those, those minerals and that layer of fouling off. Just to illustrate that a bit better, uh, if you imagine this is one of the condenser tubes inside the condenser. So as that refrigerant comes in and starts to fill the inside of the condenser and the uh, molecules, the particles of the refrigerant start to hit against um, this tube wall. Uh, it will start to condense obviously, that's what's happening here, the, the refrigerant has condensed into a liquid form and uh, as that happens the refrigerant, uh, the condenser water will pick up the heat from the refrigerant and take that away. So you'll get uh, an increase in temperature as it starts to leave and head off towards the cooling tower. However, if there's a layer of insulation or fouling occurring on the tube walls, I put it on the outside here, but actually it would occur on the inside. In fact, I've just moved that on the inside. There you go. Uh, that makes much more sense now. So with that layer of uh, fouling occurring, that means that less heat will be able to pick up. So you see that gradient there has changed, representing that less heat is being absorbed into the condenser water loop. And that means your chiller is going to have to work a lot harder for it to reject the same amount of heat. So it's important that you keep your, kit, your chillers um, clean and have uh, you know plan maintenance to to look after it and to make sure it's operating at its its very highest efficiencies. After all, this machine is probably going to use more electricity in the building compared to anything else, unless you combine some items together. Now you may have seen um, these items here, so one and another one here. Um, this one is on the underside of the chiller, so it's just before the liquid line which goes to the expansion valve. And this one here is on the discharge line of the compressor. Now these are just um, valves, and I mean this one here, the, the king valve, so these can be shut and used to isolate all the refrigerant within the condenser. So if, if you need to take this apart, um, you, this can all be refrigerant can all be pumped uh, and moved into the condenser, and these can be sealed to uh, keep all that refrigerant inside. Now, while we're looking at this, you might also see this um, seam here. There's a weld all the way along the tube there, uh, or the shell even, um, and that's just from the form where it's been manufactured. So the shell um, is this cylinder here. And what happens is it's usually made from, they take a large um, flat sheet of metal and then they just roll it round and then weld that together. Um, so there's only one seam on there, one, one seal, and that's welded together giving a very strong finish. Um, the, the tube's usually made from a mild steel, whereas the tubes are made from a copper um, and they are usually extruded. The tubes would also have um, these fins, this, this strange kind of finish to them, and that just really helps with the heat transfer. Um, I won't go too much in detail on this video, but if you go and have a look at the evaporator video, um, I've covered it in great detail there, how this works and why it exists. Uh, and a bit of an animation there showing um, how the heat transfer is, is um, increased using these fins. So I strongly recommend you go back and have a look at some of the other videos we've got on chillers um, to really build up your knowledge there and help you with your probably with your careers and uh, getting through the industry. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. And if you've got any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. 
Um, once again, check out our other videos. We were up on the Facebook, Twitter, Google+, etc. Find us on there. Thanks for watching.